Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the all new One X Player X1 Air. Basically, what we have here is a 3-in-1 device. It can dub as a laptop, a tablet, and even a gaming handheld. Now the handheld aspect is what I'm most interested in with this device. And I'll tell you what, it's actually not as heavy as I thought it would be given that we've got a 10.95 inch display on this device. Overall design here is really nice. It's milled from aluminum. It's got a rear kickstand and we've got that massive screen up front. It's actually a 120 hertz display. Putting this thing in a handheld mode is pretty easy with the controller. And at first, I mean, it looks like a normal controller. It does have a built-in battery, hall based analog sticks on this. And we can play it in kind of desktop mode, just like this. We'll just go ahead and turn it on. A little bit of RGB around those analog sticks and the front. But these controllers detach like other One X player devices in the past. And I'll show you how this works in just a second. But before we get started here, I do want to mention that this video is sponsored by URCD Keys. I've been using this site for quite some time now. They offer Steam Keys, Uplay, Ubisoft. But the main thing I pick up over here are Windows 11 Pro Keys. And right now, if you use code ETA, you can get 25% off. So at checkout, we'll just enter the code ETA. That's going to bring the price down to $22.88. They're going to email you that key, and then you can activate Windows. Speaking of that, let's head over to a new PC that I recently built. As you can see, we're running Windows 11. And from Settings, we're going to go to Activation Settings. It's going to tell us that we're not active. We don't have a key installed, so we're just going to paste it right in here. Choose Next. It's going to activate Windows for us, and we're ready to go. If you're in need of cheap Windows keys, I'll leave a link in the description. And remember, you can use code ETA for 25% off. So we can pull these off the centerpiece and attach them directly to the tablet itself. It's got a sliding locking mechanism on each side. And once we have both these attached, you'll see our RGB light up. Now we can use this as a handheld gaming PC with a pretty massive screen. It's an LTPS display with a resolution of 2560 by 1600. 120 hertz refresh rate and 138% sRGB. So a little oversaturated and that's something I love seeing in these screens. Round back here, we do have fold out kickstand, a little bit of RGB and all of our ventilation for the built-in cooling system here. Again, it's milled from aluminum. And when it comes to IO up top here, we've got our power button. You'll notice that there's a little cover over these ports here. What we've got underneath is a mini SSD slot and a 3.5 millimeter audio jack. We've also got a volume rocker and a dedicated turbo button to bring up the One X console software so we can go ahead and adjust all aspects of this handheld. On the right hand side of the unit, we've got a full size USB 3.2 port and a micro SD card slot. Plus, we've got these removable rubber covers and underneath here, we've got our pogo pins to attach those detachable controllers. They actually slide in here really nicely. And One X has done a great job in redesigning their sliding mechanism. It doesn't feel loose once everything's connected. Uh, this new revision here works out really well. And over on the left hand side, we've got two USB 4 ports and both of these will run at a 40 gig protocol. So you can connect really fast storage or even an eGPU. And finally, right here at the bottom, we've got a connection for their magnetic keyboard slash folio case. And with that connected, it basically turns it into a laptop, as you can see here. Plus, when you're done, you can just fold this right over the screen and it acts as a screen protector. And of course, when it comes to the internal specs of the new One X Player X1 Air, this is powered by the Intel Core Ultra 7 258D. I believe you can get a lower end variant of this, but this is their top of the line for the Air model right now. Eight cores, eight threads, up to 4.8 gigahertz on the performance cores. We've got that Intel Arc 140B with eight XE2 cores, and this will clock up to 1,950 megahertz. 32 gigabytes of on-package RAM with this, running at 8,533 megatransfers per second. And on-package means it's built into the CPU die. It's got a one terabyte 2280 M.2 SSD. We also have that mini SSD slot and the micro SD card slot. When it comes down to it, if you really wanted to, you could go with a 2 terabyte 2280 M.2 SSD, a 2 terabyte mini SSD, and a 2 terabyte micro SD card slot, bringing the total storage up to 6 terabytes on this 3 in 1. It's got that 10.95 inch 120 Hz LTPS display, 
2560 by 1600, 138% sRGB, and up to 540 nits of brightness. We also have a 72.77 watt hour battery. So for this unit, I mean, it's a pretty decently sized battery. And with that Core Ultra 7 258V, you can get up to 17 hours of local video playback or around 10 hours of office work out of this. And by the end of the video, we're gonna take a look at gaming on this and how much battery life we can really get out of it. So far, it's been a really smooth experience and I kind of expected it because we've got that Core Ultra 258V. I mean, it's a really decent chip. We've seen it in laptops. I think there were a couple tablets released and of course the MSI Claw AI had this chip. And One X Player has added a few special features here with these controllers attached. We've got a button over here on the left and right. On the left hand side, it's gonna bring up our game bar. And I've got this in compact mode right now. That's why it's so small. Over on the right hand side, We've got our on-screen keyboard, and as you can see, it's a 1X themed keyboard. And I showed you the turbo button up top. Pressing this one time is going to bring up 1X console. From here, we can control every aspect of this device. At the top, we've got our TDP control, and this will do anywhere from 4 watts up to 30. And with each of these, we do have a little bit of a boost for a certain period of time, and I think it's anywhere from 10 to 2 minutes, depending on what kind of wattage we're at. So for instance, at 30 watts, it boosts up to around 34 watts just for a little bit and it'll come right back down. And we can bring this up at any time, even while we're playing a game, so we can adjust this on the fly. RGB control, fan control, resolution, you can uh, turn on or off CPU boost. Lots of great features here to kind of tweak and tune this device when you're on the go. Now I want to jump into some gaming and show you how this thing performs. And the first one we have is Forza Horizon 5, definitely my go-to test for these handhelds and lower end iGPUs. Testing out the triggers around back here, we've got full linear throw and from 1X console you can adjust the endpoints or the dead zones on them. Same thing with the analog sticks and the analog sticks here with these new controllers are hall base. But yeah, very nice, very responsive, feels pretty good. I've got this game at 1200p medium settings with no XESS, I'm not using FSR or anything like that, and I'm at a 17 watt TDP. When the 258V was launched, trying to run this game at these same settings, we were only seeing around 58 FPS on average, but now we're seeing over 80 FPS on average, and it really comes down to the newer Intel Arc drivers. Next thing I wanted to do was test out this D-pad, so I'm going to be going with Street Fighter 6 here, 1200p, medium, 17 watt TDP. We've got two different D-pads that we can use, so this is detachable. You can go with the dish style or the regular D-pad, and you can hear that uh, One X player has added mechanical switches. And I'll tell you, this D-pad is raised up a bit high. Usually I like the regular style, but with these mechanical switches and given how far it's raised up from the bed, I think that the uh, dish style may work out better for more people. To swap this out, all we need to do is pull the old one off. We'll just go ahead and install the dish one. And I like this one better on this handheld. Really comes down to having those mechanical switches. With this installed, it really feels like an arcade stick. And it seems like I can actually pull these moves off much easier now. I've got a few more games to test here, so I figured I'd just connect an external controller, set this thing down stationary, and here's Cyberpunk 2077. We're at a 30 watt TDP, 1200p medium with XESS set to balance. Really good performance, we're over 60 FPS on average, in fact we're seeing an average of around 66 FPS with it set up like this, and taking the resolution down to 1600 by 1000 will net us a bit more, we can get up to around 72 on average. But with this XE2-based iGPU, we now have access to Intel's XESS frame generation and XESS low latency. So now, at 1200p medium with XESS frame generation on at a 30-watt TDP, we're now over 100 FPS on average. And I'll tell you, this is some of my favorite frame generation that I've seen. Wish more games supported it, and I know in the future they will be adding it. Next on the list, we've got God of War Ragnarok 1200p low XESS set to balance 30 watt TDP. And in order to get over 60 at around a 17 watt TDP, we will need to use frame generation. But unfortunately, this game doesn't support XESS frame gen. You have to go with FSR. 
I mean, it still works with this chip, but taking it up to 30 watts will net you over 70 FPS on average at medium. And before we move over to indie gaming and battery testing, I wanted to test GTA 5 Enhanced Edition, 1200p, high, 30 watt TDP, no scaling. FPS is sitting in the mid 90s with this game, and I knew we'd see good performance with this, but I wanted to test it at 1200p because it's actually been a while since I've tested it on the 250 AV. Taking a look at some low watt indie gaming with this thing and on screen with Afterburner, at the very bottom I've got the total battery draw listed and this is everything being pulled from this unit. So the speakers, the screen, I've got the RGB off right now. We're sitting around 8.2 watts in total battery draw and I've got the TDP set at 8 watts. It just doesn't need to go up to 8 watts to run this game at 60 FPS. I also wanted to go with something just a little easier to run, so I went with Shredder's Revenge. We're using the same settings, and now our total battery draw is right there at around 6.6 .6 to 6.9, so we can kind of average that out for indie gaming and 2D gaming. It's gonna be right there in the middle between what we were getting in Silk Song and this one here. But I also needed to test at a 17 watt TDP, so I just took Cyberpunk here, and we're at 17 watts from 1X console looking at around 25.6 watts in total draw and at a 28 watt tdp that's going to jump up much more around around 42.7 watts total draw so knowing this we can kind of estimate what kind of battery life we get with gaming at certain tdps with the one x player x1 air we've got a 72.77 watt hour battery with my testing, screen brightness was at 50%, RGB was off, and the refresh rate was set to 60 hertz instead of 120. Low-end indie gaming and 2D gaming, this thing is only going to draw around 8 watts in total from the battery, so that's over 9 hours of battery life. AAA gaming at a 17 watt TDP, pulling around 26 watts in total, around 2 hours and 45 minutes. And AAA gaming at a 28 watt TDP, 42.6 watts drawn from the battery, around 1 hour and 40 minutes. Overall, I do think the One X Player X1 Air is a solid device if you're looking for a 3-in-1. Now, if you're looking for a dedicated handheld, they've got a lot of different options, but if you need something for, let's say, work and school, and then when you get out, you want to throw some controllers on it and game, this thing would work out really well for you. But in the end, it's really up to you. We're seeing good battery life here. I do love the screen, but I wish it was a variable refresh rate display. I mean, we've got a high resolution and it does look absolutely beautiful. And the fact that, you know, we've got three different modes that we can use with this tablet mode, laptop mode, and handheld mode is definitely a plus for some people out there. But again, if you're looking for a dedicated handheld, there are better choices out there. Either way, I mean, this was a pretty fun device to mess with for a little while, but that's going to wrap it up for this one. If you want to see anything else running on the One X Player X1 Air, like maybe some eGPU testing, let me know in the comments below. And if you're interested in learning a little more about this device, I'll leave links to the official website in the description. But that's it for this one. Like always, thanks for watching.